see the obstacles in our way, which each of us, you know, you got to have a few obstacles in life, and how to overcome them. So he's got some suggestions and some thoughts and some ideas. And the part that I like the best is he has inspired thousands of people to find their inner badass. That's the part that I'm waiting for and achieve greatness. So so without further ado, please welcome Donnie Boykin. Donnie, what's his name? <laughs> Donnie B. Hey, you know, I was went through the Marine Corps, and imagine going through the Marine Corps with last name like Bovine. The drill instructors had a lot of fun with Bovine, oh, okay. right? right? So we, yeah. we call it hell. How many veterans have I got in the room? God love you. God love you. Guys, yeah. seriously, round of applause for our veterans. Yeah. 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 I always start off every presentation that I'm a former United States Marine, and I don't say that to brag, but the name of the speech is Finding You're in a Badass, so I am going to cuss, so just just hold on for the ride. Uh, <laughs> embrace the journey. Um, for the veterans in the group, um, see me afterwards. I have some cool places you can plug into. One group that I know of has over 12,000 entrepreneur veterans in that I can help plug you into, so if you want that access, let me know afterwards. Yeah, like so... Um, I don't know much about you guys' group and, and what you guys do, but my goal is today is to make this as interactive as hell. So as I love doing in front of rooms like this, you're going to build my presentation for me. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story, how I got to this level, and how I got to where I am. And I'm going to have you guys throw questions at me. Um, anybody know who Gary Vaynerchuk is? Anybody ever seen that guy? If you don't know who Gary V is, go look him up. But we're going to do a very much a Gary V style today, which is a lot of Q&A. Okay, after I tell you my story. So here's my background. I spent 18 years as a straight commission sales guy, meaning I had to eat only what I killed. I from there was an executive, I was there, I was a trainer. And for the last seven years, I actually spent training salespeople how to get out of their way and go for it, training executives how to manage their sales team, and just had a lot of fun. Along that journey, it gave me a lot of time to step in front of rooms and just be me and help people get out of their own damn way. And that is my mission and goal in life, is to help people on that journey. So to start off, what I want you to think about is how do you define success, right? A guy like me, I cannot tell you what success is, but I challenge you, if you don't have something to write with, this is your one time, break out your phones, right? And put this down, but I want you to define what success is for you. Vision challenge. <laughs> I already have it. <laughs> Got it. Okay? Right? Here's what success means to me. And it's one word. Success for me means freedom. To do what I want, when I want, anytime I can contemplate it. And that's freedom. My wife and I had the privilege of, gosh, a year and a half ago, building our dream house on our farm. We were, we were lucky enough that we have a three-story Victorian-style house out there with water on the property and everything else, and it's only because I jumped in and started chasing my own dream. See, I learned somewhere along the way that I've spent my entire time making other people wealthy, right? <laughs> making other people's dreams come true, and I wasn't following my own journey. So for me, success means freedom. And I want you to embrace that concept. That's, that's mine. It's not yours. But as you go on whatever journey you're on, Define what success means for you so you know exactly what you're aiming at. Anybody know who Zig Ziglar is? Mm -hmm. Right? But this is an older crowd, so you guys still know who Zig is. <laughs> right? But Zig said it best. He's like, you know, most people go through life and they're not aiming at anything. It's like they're trying to take a bow and arrow and shoot a target with a blindfold on. Right? If you don't know where you're going, then how the hell do you know when you got there? Mm -hmm. Right? Figure out what success means for you and then flat out do whatever you can to go for it and don't hold back. So, here's how you guys are gonna build my presentation for me. You're sitting with a guy who spent 18 years grinding it out, cold calling, kicking in doors, scraping everything to do sales. So I will answer any sales related questions you have, any networking related questions you have, any marketing questions you have, anything that you wanna cover, that stays away from religion, politics, or any other taboo topics. Fair enough? So what I want you to write down is, the number one thing that's keeping me from success is, and then fill in the blank. The number one thing that's keeping me from success is, and then fill in that blank. 
Does anyone need a pen? Got it. Got it. Good. Got it. Wow. Sweet. I already know it. Now, you want to know the easiest way to ever give a speech ever? <laughs> Just do this, right? Do you like my PowerPoint? Is it good? We good? Everything's working. We can see the pictures okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Is my rum coming? Little Captain Morgan rocks? All right, so here's how we're going to do it. I'm just going to start open it up. If somebody will share with me what's holding them back from success or anything else, we'll dive in and go full tilt boogie on whatever you want to accomplish. Anybody brave enough to say that? Oh, dang. Yeah, ladies first. Huh? Go. There's seven. Oh, seven. The only thing keeping me from success is me. Oh, I love that. I love that. Anybody know what the phrase head trash is? Yeah. We actually have that speaker, Noah St. John. Noah's good dude, yeah. right? Right. So, so head trash is all the crap going on between our ears. I like looking at it this way. Um, at all times, I don't believe there's a good angel and a bad angel. I think there's one little bastard, and he's a gremlin that sits on our shoulder. <laughs> it's the guy filming whose phone you're in. That's funny. Right? So this little gremlin sits on your shoulder, right? Hey, if you do me a favor and put your phones on kill, mute, stun, something, it'd be great. Um, but this little gremlin, right, he's sitting right here, and here's the trick about that little bastard, is he knows everything to screw up your life. Why? Because he spent the entire journey with you, right? And he's that little voice that pops up. Every time you think I'm going to go for it, he's like, nah, not today. You're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You can't handle it. You're not going to do it. Right? So what I tell everybody I want you to do is I want you to yank that little bastard off your shoulder, punch him square in the face, and start moving forward. Right? Because here's the trick, guys. Action fixes everything. Without action, you can't go anywhere. Right? And most people sit around and they think, I've got to wait till I find motivation before I can do. And that doesn't work that way. And I love using the analogy of, let's say you just went home. You cook dinner, right? And now you've got the pots and the pans and the plates, and you're sitting in the sink. You have two choices at this point. Choice number one, you can do the dishes. Choice number two, you can go sit and watch whatever you DVR, right? And here's a trick. Some people go, I just don't feel like doing the dishes, and they go watch the DVR, right? The trick is, is the phrase, I don't feel like doing it. It's never a feel like doing it, right? The trick is, is taking the action and doing the damn dishes, because what happens next? <laughs> right? Well, you get the dishes done, then you wipe the counter, then you wipe the stove, next thing you know, you're vacuuming the floor, you're doing the laundry, right? Because motivation happens after the actual action, right? And once you start doing, everything else kicks in. And right, people often comes up and they confuse courage with motivation, right? And here's the trick is courage causes motivation. It's not the other way around. You can't get motivated then to find courage because courage is what creates our confidence, right? Courage is what allows us to actually go do and be and become because we're actually taking action to move forward. Is this making sense, <laughs> right? But all too often, we're sitting back waiting for the world to show up and say, here you go. Anybody ever had that happen? No. Uh, one of these days, I will find somebody that that's happened to, and I'm going to give them a hug, I swear. I mean, holy shit, that would be nice. Right? But the life is a grind, guys. Life is all about going all in and figuring it out, but it's never going to show up and say, here I am. So you've got to go after it. Does that help, Miss Head Trash? Uh -huh. All right. Awesome. Who else has got another one? You see how this is going to work? Whatever you wrote down. Procrastination. Procrastination. What is procrastination? Fear. No. I'll do it tomorrow. No. Procrastination is a lack of giving a shit. You want to figure out what you're motivated about in life and what you care about in life? Look at two things. Look at your checkbook and look at your calendar. Those are the only two things you can guarantee you know what you care about in life. Because if you look at your calendar, you'll, show, you'll see the things that you enjoy doing and that's what's going to get done. If you look at your checkbook and whatever you're spending your money on, that's what you give a shit about, right? And procrastination only comes in play because you don't give a shit about it. If you really gave a damn about whatever that is, you'd go do it, right? That's the only reason people don't do it is because they're freaking, be nice, 
They're lazy as hell. Yes, they are. Right? Right? Is they see it in front of them. They know that maneuver is the thing that can change and transform everything they do, but they're not taking the move. That's where the fear comes into play. Has anybody ever seen Joseph Campbell's story, The Hero's Journey? All right, I highly recommend before you go to bed tonight, jump on YouTube, look up Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey. Phenomenal, phenomenal line. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Go read it. Go listen to it. Um, but if anybody loves the, the fantasy ep epic movies like Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, you know, any of those type of things, you are going to love this philosophy. Okay? It is absolutely awesome. Okay? But one of the things he does talk about in there is facing your fears. So I am not a Star Wars buff, but I'm going to steal one scene out of Joseph's stuff. Um, anybody here one of those Star Wars freaks? I don't want to offend. All right, we got one. In there. We always got one. Okay. So in one of the Star Wars movies, I don't know which ones. So don't beat me up. Okay. Um, Luke walks into this cave and, he's, and he ends up like in almost a dreamlike state, battling Darth Vader. Right. And they're duking it out with their lightsaber swords, whatever the hell they are. Right. As they're duking it out, Luke actually lops a head off of Darth Vader, and it rolls to the floor. The mask falls off, and when Luke looks down, what does he see? Yes, himself. himself. All fear is, is you battling yourself, right? That's why he goes in the cave, is to conquer himself, right? And most times when people have a fear, it's just some bullshit story that the gremlin's calling you out on, right? The gremlin, he knows, he absolutely knows how to get you to move forward, how to get you to slow down, right? And when he starts talking, you gotta rip his ass off your shoulder, punch him in the face, so you can continue moving forward. Does that make sense? All right? Help with procrastination a little bit? All right, cool. Give me another one. Opportunities. What do you mean by opportunities? Finding the right ones can help you succeed. Um, you can filter through many opportunities and you're never going to find the right one. Oh, I love that. I love that. Um, guys, when I'm going through Marine Corps, there was a, a point in my time when I'm going through boot camp. And it was on training day 17 or 18 right there, so I'm, I'm a couple weeks into boot camp. And I remember laying my rap going, why the hell can't they just make me a Marine? Why do I got to go through this shit and these guys yelling and screaming at me, getting up, running stupid miles? Why do I got to go through all this bullshit? Right? And then as you get later on and you're going through, you know, things start clicking. They're putting me through this shit so I'm prepared for what I'm about to walk into. Without this training, I can't do what I need to do. This is where the phrase, embrace the suck, comes from. Yes. Right? <laughs> right? You're going to have to go through the shit to get what you want. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and Gary V says it best, and he talks about eating shit all the time. Right? And what that is, is you've got to go through the grind. You've got to go do the things you don't want to do, no matter what pops up. Right? Put your head down. I love the phrase that a mentor of mine told me not too long ago. He goes, look, Donnie, with your business, somebody else has carved the path. You don't have to break out the machete. You just need to follow their path of what they did for the next two years. Put your head down, get after it. After two years, look up and go, wow, this is what I've accomplished. But most times, people are chasing squirrels. Anybody ever seen the, the movie Up? Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That damn dog is like, squirrel. Right? Squirrel. Right? But most people, because they're not putting their head down and actually grinding to find the opportunities to go after them and knocking them down and learning from them, right, and can keep going after them and keep grinding it out, right, they're chasing these damn squirrels all over the place, and they're doing this, which means they're accomplishing jack shit, right? Guys, opportunities will only happen because you put yourself out there and you're actively working. I would challenge that very few people understand what work is. Most people are doing things to stay busy, right? Or and, Facebook. Or Facebook, right? <laughs> right. But there's a lot of people, you'll see them, they work all day long. They get home, they sit on the couch and go, damn, I'm tired. But then you ask them, they're like, what'd you accomplish? Nothing. Nothing. But they feel like that, that, that activity was productive. But they never actually worked. Probably means they didn't have a plan. Absolutely, probably didn't have a plan. Says the guy who's a plan strategist guy, right? <laughs> right? So, so the philosophy I want you to think about how to constantly find new opportunities is position yourself so they appear, right? Is you should look at your schedule 
Take a piece of paper, draw a cross right in the center of it. Top left side, put the word money. Top right side, put the word no money. Okay? Put all the activities that earn you money, means you're client facing, down that left column. Put all the activities that are non money earning down the right column. And then between the time you can be client facing, do nothing but what generates you revenue. After that time's done, you get to that five o'clock whistle, whatever your dead time is, now go do your operational bullshit. The things that most of you want to do versus go out and sell and grow your business. Because the operational stuff is a hell of a lot more fun than the actual of actually going to sell. Right? Is that making sense? Yes, sir. Ooh, sir. <laughs> Damn, he's like three years my age. <laughs> three? <laughs> right? It's polite, it's easy. <laughs> right? But, but it, it's really about, right? And I still want that rum. <laughs> but, it, but it's really about actively working and doing the things you're supposed to do even when you don't want to do them, right? Just think about it. When, when I was doing a lot of sales training and I was working with a lot of young people that were just getting in sales, you know, it'd be funny. I'm like, okay, show me how you start your day. And they would literally take their business cards that I got from the networking event the night before and go, okay, I'm uploading to my CRM. I'm like, why are we doing that now? Should have done that last time. Right, right. And they're like, well, I've got to get this done. I said, good, I'm, we're not paying you to fill up your CRM. I'm paying you to get on the damn phone. I'm paying you to get out of network. I'm paying you to get out there and actually work for a living, not move your business cards from one side of the desk to the other. Right? Get out and actually work when you can work. If you can be client facing, go be client facing. Go get belly to belly with these folks, right? Get them on the damn phone. Then when you get home at night, that's when it's your time to fill out your CR and fill out your paperwork, your operation. That's your time. I'm not paying to do that, right? To find the opportunities, you've got to change the way you look at your business and do the work, the right work at the right time, so you can actively grow your business. To help. Awesome. Give me another one. This is how you get people to build your presentation for you. I don't have to come up with the material. Well, mine kind of falls into all those inconsistency. Inconsistency. What do you mean particularly by inconsistency? Well, especially in my business, it's uh, uh, it can be very easy to make a lot of money in a very short period of time. Right. Uh, and then kind of hit cruise control for yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I have the head knowledge that that's a bad idea, but at the time it seems like a really good idea. You absolutely, know I mean? so, absolutely. Okay, um, this is fun. I just left a company this morning doing a presentation for their entire sales force, and we were talking about this in particular. So, here's what happens: is people move through life to plateau, right? Is what happens is as they move through life, they're looking for the way to pull the foot off the gas because they want that ha ah, time, right? Um, one of my mentors, who you guys should get out here to come speak, a guy named Scott Sherwin, okay? Great guy, you should get him to come out here and speak, okay? Um, but I remember when I first went to work for Scott, I asked him a question. I'm like, Scott, when do you turn it off, right? When do you turn your philosophy off? When do you turn your, your the way you talk off? When, when, when do you turn it off? And he goes, what do you mean? And I said, every time you talk to somebody, it's, it's like you're on. Right? It's, it's, it's like you've ingrained this philosophy and you're on. I'm like, when you turn up, when you relax, and he goes, Donnie, I don't even understand the question. It's not a matter of turning off. This is who I am. And it was the first time in my life that I realized there is no off. It's always on. And I was telling a sales group that I was talking to today is, God, just because you went home and got to kiss your wife and kids doesn't mean you stop doing what your career is. In your case, I mean, it doesn't mean you stop being a financial advisor. It, I mean, oftentimes, guys, I find myself going to bed with my wife at 9, 10 o'clock, and at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm back up working on my business. Why? Because that's the time I can do all the operational stuff. That's the time I can respond to emails. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I get tired as hell some days. You know, especially on days today when I've got one more speaking engagement yet, and I've already done one this morning. Okay, right? But this is time for me to be prospect facing. Right? I'm going to stack them up as many as possible. The only way to stop that is to never turn it off. 
And I don't care where you guys are, where you're at, who you're talking to, what you're doing. I would tell you, you better be talking shop. Not from a sales perspective, but because that's who you are. Whatever you do is what you are, right? Can I challenge that in this sense? Sure. So how do you create balance in your life if you're always on? Great question. So my wife and I have one rule. Eight o'clock whistle blows in our house, no business. From eight to 10, that is our window. We do dinner, we do everything else, eight to 10, Nothing, no phone calls, no emails, no conversation, anything else, that is our time. Second rule, if she's awake, I can't do business. Why do you think I get up at two, three o'clock in the morning? Why do you think on the mornings, on Saturday and Sunday, I let my wife sleep in? <laughs> they, right? they, they bitch about when you get home from work, but they never complain about when you go to work. Correct, <laughs> correct, that is, that's brilliantly said. Right? So it's, it's about working in the business and putting that, that time in place where you can spend time with so the So you do set limits. Absolutely. Okay. Jen, yeah. good question. Absolutely. Why the caveat? That's easy when it's just you and her. What about Honey, I've owned an entire farm. My mother-in-law's on the property. Um, every morning I'm up at 5.30. I've taken care of goats, chickens, ducks, taking care of dogs, making the coffee for her, writing an article, journaling, doing some meditation. Right? All this before my day even starts. Then I go out and I grind business all day long, and I still have operational shit that I gotta do for my business, right? So I come home, I take care of the chickens, I take care of the goats, I take care of the ducks, the cats, the dogs, I cook dinner, right? I spend time watching whatever stupid DVR, Grey's Anatomy BS that she wants to watch, right? One of the shows, if you've never read the book, The Year of Yes by Shonda Rhimes, I highly, highly recommend that book, The Year of Yes, Shonda Rhimes, amazing read. She's a gal who does Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, and those other shows out there, right? Right? Right. So it's tough no matter what. Nobody's got it easy. And if you got kids, it adds a whole other dynamic. But those kids go to bed, right? You're tired, you're whooped, you're exhausted. You've got sporting events you've got to go to. Guys, I look at it this way. If you have to give up a business hour to do something else, you owe that business hour. Right? If you've got to give up a business hour to go to a sporting event, to take your kids to a soccer game, to a cheerleading match, whatever else, you own that business hour. Right? Otherwise, you're working a job and not running a business. And I don't care who you are, you are the CEO of your business. I don't care who you work for. And you have to work this such. Do you have a question? Yeah, I was going to say, how do you keep the energy and motivation going if you have to do all that? Cocaine. Okay. <laughs> that was a good time. I didn't even think about that. Eric Clapton made that song for you. Which yeah. I didn't know is he wasn't joking. <laughs> Hit an eight ball right before I walked in. Um, uh, here's what I'll challenge. If, if that energy level is tough, I would honestly tell people most times in question, are you doing what you love? Yeah, right. Is this really your passion? Because I can tell you, I get tired. Like, by the time I get done with the speech this afternoon, I'm going to be exhausted. But I guarantee you somebody would call me up and say, hey, Donnie, can you come do one more? you damn right I'm running over there, tired as hell. And I'm going to do it the Bruce Springsteen style. They're getting everything I have. Right? And they're going to pick me up off that stage if I stumble over if I'm exhausted. I, I just reinforce that because I, you asked about a, you know, what's preventing success. I, I, I believe that I have success. So nothing's preventing. Love it. Because I, that's the way I feel about my life. But in the early days, I never felt like I was running out of energy because everything I was doing, I loved. So when when you're doing stuff that you love, it does, it's not work. It's right. fun. And the more fun you do, the more motivated you stay. And maybe and, you, can, and, and you could burn yourself out. I yeah, suspect, absolutely. But, but here's the thing: is like right now, I'm learning all this Facebook crap because the whole world is shifting to this social cell and it's driving me nuts. I mean, I'm literally, I'm that guy that cranked cold calls and kicked in doors, right, right. right, to grow a business, and everything's going so social, it's driving me crazy. Mm. Cold calling still works, and I would challenge any asshole that says it doesn't, freaking give me a phone and a book, and I'll prove it yeah. still works. Right. It's just, everything is shifting at the moment, right? Um, so I'm learning this Facebook stuff, and it's driving me nuts, because I'm watching these videos, and I'm working with this company, that's mm. teaching me all this stuff. But here's the thing, it's growing my business, mm. Mm -hmm. right? I'm gonna go through the suck to learn all the stuff that I don't know anything about. 
And they're telling me I gotta start doing this Snapchat crap. And I'm still like, I don't know how to do Snapchat, but look, it's what's gonna grow my business. I'm gonna embrace the suck because that's what's gonna help me keep my passion going, right? It's gonna help me get the things doing that I wanna do. So if, if there's times that, that you're just not feeling it, there's a chance you don't love what you do. That's back to what Jenna says, it's the vision challenge. Mm -hmm. You gotta know what you want. Right? And I love it. Rocky Balboa said it the best. If you know what you're worth, go get what you're worth. Right? But most times, we don't know what the definition of success in our life is. So we don't know what to go get. Right? If you know what you're worth, go get what you're worth. Does that help, guys? Hit me with another one. Come on. You know you've written something down. Uh, I can tell you one of them. Come on. Confidence. confidence. We're not getting answers because it's confidence. <laughs> I don't want to say anything because he's going to yell at me and use curse words. Right? You don't think you've really heard. <laughs> Good. You can Good. Right? What is confidence, guys? Experience. Belief. I like both those answers. And they're, they're, they're both absolutely right. Here's all confidence is. It's showing up when you don't want to. Right? It's doing the shit you don't want to do. Right? It's actively doing things. Because confidence is not an emotion. Confidence is an action. Right? Confidence doesn't come because some of these motivational gurus that tell you if you say I love myself a hundred times, you're going to get a million dollars tomorrow and all that crap they try and sell you. Right? And that's the reason it's a billion dollar industry because they can tell people all the time if you say I love myself, you're going to be a millionaire. Well, people want the easy route, so they're going to buy the easy path, right? It doesn't work that way, right? Confidence comes from doing. Confidence comes from taking action. And here's the thing, is we all have this comfort zone. I am going to do go this route, right? Here's what I think the comfort zone is. It's literally like you've got a big bouncer standing outside this beam of light that's inside your head, and he's got a red rope all the way around that beam of light. That's your comfort zone, okay? And when you get to the edge of that comfort zone, that bouncer walks up and goes, yeah, not today, right? Here's the thing. He's not really a bouncer. He's a bully. And how do we deal with bullies? Punch the you face. punch him square in the face. <laughs> so when you, get, <laughs> when you get up to that rope, and that bouncer, who's really a bully, stands up, knock the shit out of him, knock him on his ass, and he gets out of the way, and then you step forward. Here's the thing, though. That bully thinks he's a bouncer. Right? So after you step forward, he steps back up, and he puts up another red rope. Right? And you have two choices at that point. You either punch him in the damn face again, or he starts manning up, and next thing you know, your comfort zone shrinks right back up. And you are back to that little center time circle and not moving out of it. And the only way to get the confidence is taking action and constantly punching that bastard in the face and moving forward. Then we continue to move forward and move forward again and move forward again. And it's when we get to that spot, we're like, ah, oh, that he goes, oh, I got this shit. And he starts stepping forward, right? Right? That's the only way to find confidence. Confidence will never, ever come by telling yourself, I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm confident. You can tell that to your blue in the face. It's never going to work. If you take action and move forward, you'll find it. You'll find it. Okay? Exercise. I'd be on the phone all morning, start getting really tired, go to the gym, beat the bag, run. Get him, you know, and every day you try and do a little bit more. It helps build confidence, get your adrenaline going. Absolutely. Get back to the office. I couldn't wait to get back on the phone. Right? I would tell you guys, the truth of the matter is, the reason we stop doing things is because we start playing head games with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. Right? We know we should make a cold call. We know we should go to a networking event. We know we should do this, and that gremlin starts talking. Right? Doing things like doing exercises. Um, literally, when I worked with one sales team, the manager, every hour would come out and do like this calisthenic things where they would jump, do jumpy jacks, they'd do push-ups, and they would do competitions. And all it was was re-energizing the team to go to the next round. 
right? right? Do the thing you fear, right? Take action, do those type of things, and watch what happens. But I will tell you, along the lines of exercise, if you don't take care of this, it's going to take care of you. If you don't take care of your health, it's going to take care of you. If you don't take care of your family, it's going to take care of you. If you don't figure out how to become the ruler over your life, somebody else is going to rule that damn thing. You don't figure out how to work your own plan in life, you're going to work somebody else's plan. Right? We all get one shot on this damn rock. That's it. One shot, one opportunity. It's a great rap song. Right? Who sings it? Eminem. Eminem. Right? There's a young into the room. All the old people are like, who the hell is that? Wow. That's old school Eminem. Right, right. Yeah. That could be first time. All right, Jenny, you're hitting a thousand today. If can I take people. you with me everywhere I go? <laughs> I was going to say, can I take you? <laughs> right? But, but, but you've got to give it a your all. And along with that line, you've got to take care of everything. Right? You can't just go all in on work and not take care of yourself. You can't just go all in on work and not take care of your family. Right? You've got to set it all. And you've got to continue giving it your all. Right? And I tell you, you should work as hard on your family as you do your business. I love it. Jim Rohn says it best. When, you ask him, when Jim was around, um, I never got the privilege of meeting him. It's really unfortunate for me. But um, Jim would look at a crowd and he'd ask this question. In a marriage of, a, of two people, if you were to break that marriage down by 100%, 0 to 100%, how much of that marriage is responsible for the husband? How much of that marriage is responsible for the wife? What's the split? 100% each person. Right? But most people believe it's only 50%. Your marriage, your relationship, your life is 100% on you. Not that. And business is the same thing. When you sit across from a prospect, it's 100% on you. To deliver real value. To go have real, authentic conversations. And not to be that sleazeball, jackass sales guy that you don't want to deal with. <laughs> right? Or be. Or be, right. Well, some people want to be. I've met <laughs> Another question? Well, I was just going to say, you know, with that, and this is the whole success comes worries. I mean, if you're a salesperson, you don't want to annoy them. So how do you combat that anxiety or worrisome of not wanting to annoy your customers? So, I think. Speed up. Yeah. Loud the recording. So I'm thinking, that's the result of your expectation. You think that you will annoy them, so that mm -hmm. affects how you perform. And that was going to be. I was just waiting for you to say yeah. what keeps you back from being successful. And for me, it's unrealistic such uh, expectations. You think that everything's going to go yeah. come up roses, you know, or you think it's going to go bad. And then you perform either way. You think it's going to. It all becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. Can I, can I, I add on to that? Come on, you said. Oh, come on. You, you said. <coughs> I think the key is you won't annoy them if you give them real value. Yeah. If you give them what they really want, you're not going to annoy them. Right. If you're trying to sell a refrigerator or an Eskimo, you're going to annoy them. Guys, here, here's the truth. He needs it though. <laughs> <laughs> if you act, sound, talk, walk like a salesperson. How are you going to be treated? Like so quit being a damn salesperson. Go get real conversations with people and be okay with the outcome no matter what it, what it is. Sales is nothing more than a conversation. Two people sitting down and having a conversation. We're out of her. I'm a 10? Sweet. Right? But this is what I have a conversation. It's not going to come. It is. Right. Right? And you've got to be 100% not worried about what the outcome is. People go into the deals, right? And what happens when deals go south is because they're worried about paying their bills. They're worried about getting their kids to college. They're worried about, desperate. Yeah, desperation stinks like shit. Yeah. Right? So, Trick, I actually, she's been working with me. Her cold prospect she's reaching call me, and they're happy she's reached out. Love because it. she has a solution to a problem they're having. Cool. Love it. That's a win, right? That's a win, man. And guys, a part of the battle when it comes to sales is go sell to the people who want your product and service. 
Otherwise, you're gonna start forcing the shit down people's throat. No. And that's the wrong answer. Right. If you make them your friend, they won't know they're being sold. I'm gonna challenge that just a little bit, okay? Mm. There's a big phrase out there that people say they do business with people they know, like, and trust. That's right. Right? Throw the word like in the trash. Because what happens is, is people go make friends. They don't turn it into business. People buy from people they trust. They want to deal with people that are like them. And I don't care who you are. If I don't trust you, we're not doing business. Like is an added bonus, guys. It is an added, added bonus. But if you're real, you're authentic, you go have real conversations, you will establish trust, and trust turns into business. That's kind of the whole realm of when they become your friend. Not a, not a Facebook friend, but <laughs> respected friend that they look up With that voice, I so love the fact that you said respected. It just, <laughs> just, just made my day. <laughs> respect and, and the acknowledgement that you're people you're trying to sell to respect you, value your yeah. opinion, not as a salesman, but somebody that they feel cares about their business. And I, I agree. Good. My only hang up with a no like and trust statement is people get so hung up on the like. Yeah, yeah can't right. make people. I want to be like. Right? And it's because they're so worried that this person has to be my friend to buy from me. Man, look, we don't have to be friends, but if I trust you, I'll still do business with you. Right. 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 Yeah, it does. You know, it does. You know, can it be spicy right? from your perspective, customer? Absolutely. And yeah. guys, I'll tell you, sales is the easiest profession in the world. We make it hard. Right? right? And it's because we're so hung up that I've got to sell this. Right? That I've got to take this person... And there's, there's gurus out there right now, and I won't use names, that I just can't stand. Because their philosophy is that, that person's, my money's in that person's pocket, and they're not getting away from me until I have their money. Oh, that is absolute great. bullshit. Right? He, right now, that guy that touts that is one of the biggest sales speakers out there right now. He's driving me up the damn wall. Right? Right? Guys, if you walk into business with that philosophy, I'm sure you'll get deals done, yes, I'm sure but they won't come back. <laughs> that makes me mad as a prospective customer. Yes. Right. I agree. Right? Yep. Right? So you've got to go be authentic. Right? If people have this philosophy that I'm going to show up one time and get the deal done. <laughs> how the often, deal. Right? I'm going to ask you guys, how often do you buy on the first meeting? Seldom. Right, but we expect people when we sit across from them to go, absolutely, I love everything you see, let's get it done, let's get it done. bullshit, right? Nurture these things, get trust established, go be real. Don't talk about sales here in a sales call. Go establish trust, go get to know them. Don't worry about the friendship thing, that'll come, right? It's like networking. You don't go networking to find friends, you go find networking to find trusted partners that will help you grow their business by introducing them to their network, not them. If you're networking in your own pools, you're doing it wrong. There is more value by turning that person you're dealing with into your own personal champion that's outgrowing your business than you sitting across and trying to sell that individual your shit. But most people come to events and things like that and they look around and they go, oh great, I got 15 prospects in the room. No, you got 15 trusted partners. Right. High five. You would give me the five minute sign, so. <laughs> Pretty soon it's the one. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Which one? Right? <laughs> right? And just since I talked on networking, all networking is, is building other people's businesses. Right? If you go into networking to build your business, you're doing business wrong. Because you could take a room like this and have 15 people out actively selling for you if you handle that room right. I'd rather people be out there and say, hey, if you need a success coach, you need a motivational speaker, anything like that, you need to go and get Donnie to come to your events. That's more valuable to me than sitting across from somebody and go, dude, you need me. Well, you need me as a coach, but I'm just saying. No, I'm right? But saying, hey, I'm Donnie. Do you need a success coach? Right? 
And nobody wants to deal with that guy. Right? But if I take the time to really get to know somebody and I'm actively looking to grow their business, now I got a chance at building trust. It's just I'm a little rough around the edges. I'm gonna bust some of these chops in the first five minutes of talking to them. So uh, at least we know what kind of ground we're standing on. I like it. <laughs> right? Is this helpful? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, since we're at the five minute whistle, or wherever we're at now, okay, um, I do have an ebook out. This is my only shameless plug. Okay, and I'll give you my business card so you can get to my website easier. Okay, the name of this book is called "That's Not How You Journal, Jackass." Yeah, that's this one. Okay, right. And what happened was, is early in my sales career, I've always had a mentor or a coach in my life. Um, and early in my sales career, I was in a huge sales slump, and and life just sucked. Uh, my sales were down, and I was just playing "Oh, woe is me." And I went to my coach at this point. And I'm just doing the sad sob story of life sucks, business is not coming in, I'm just beating myself up. And he looks at me and he goes, do you journal? And I started laughing at him. I'm like, no, I don't journal. He goes, what do you think journaling is? I'm like, that's what a little 12 year old little girl does, you know, in junior high. I'm not doing that shit. He goes, that's not how you journal, jackass. And I said, if I ever write a book, that is what I'm titling it. And so I did, because at that point, he told me these exact words. He said, you will never find success in life if you do not journal. Whatever you define success for you in your life, if you do not actively journal, you will not find the success you want to, want to see. So I said about that day, determined that I was going to prove that journaling worked. Because every time I tried it before, I went into it with the mindset that this shit's never going to work. And you want to talk about self-fulfilling prophecy? There's one for you, right? So I went into it to say, I'm going to make this work. And then I spent some time figuring out a, a methodology that works for me. I hope it works for you guys too, but I'm not going to spoil the ending. I want you to get the damn book. It's free, by the way. Um, it's on my website. Since it's recording, I'll say it. Uh, my <laughs> says the financial guy. I can't afford it. Um, right. So my website is donniebovine.com. Okay, which is D O N N I E B as in boy O I B as in Victor I N dot com. Up in the header, you'll see a, a, a one of those whatever you, buttons you click on. It says Jackass Journal. Right. Go click on it. Download it. It's a free download. Um, to get on there, and it'll walk you through. By the way, in the advertisement for t today's thing on our Facebook site, that's what it looks like. You've yeah. probably seen that to come, and at the bottom is his website, his email, awesome. and it's on his Facebook wife's phone too. number, and all Beautiful. that stuff. Beautiful. It's on Facebook as well. Um, I also have a Facebook group, it's just called Success Champion. Just three plus to get in there. I'm doing daily things. I also have a daily motivational email that goes out. Every morning, I literally sit down and write. Um, usually about something I'm learning at that time. If you're interested in that, get in your business card. I'll, bet it, I'll just take your sheet and put everybody in there. I'm not kidding. <laughs> no, but Very I good. would definitely recommend it. I get his newsletter and I thoroughly enjoy really? it. Thank We're you. definitely one of the better ones. It will entertain you. Thank you. Um, uh, I write from everything about things that happen on my farm, just a motivational. Uh, I have people that say, Donnie, do you have to say badass that early in the morning? I'm like, well, yeah, that's what I do. Right? So, so anything I can answer for you guys? So, we, 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 real question, was this valuable? Was this good information for you guys? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I, I just, I, I wrote down, and I've been through a bunch of these. In my opinion, this was the first truly down-to-earth, realistic talk that I've heard. Thank you for that. Very valuable. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Guys, when I decided to do this and go out, one of the things that I absolutely had is I had to give tactics. I had to get real. I had to be raw. The only way you can be raw in front of a room, you just got to share shit. You got to share your life. You got to share your story. So thank you. That's what you do. So anything else I can answer for you guys? You said that's being wrong? Raw. R-A-W. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yes, thank absolutely raw. It sucks. It's horrible. <laughs> raw. Excellent. What you see is what you get. Absolutely. That's it. Right. I, I, I was at an event yesterday. Okay. And I was like one of two people that wasn't in a suit. And somebody walked up to me and they're like, well, I see you dressed up for today. I'm like, I see you're in a monkey suit. Um, because this is me, guys. This is where I wear. I don't care where I go. This, this is just who I am. I heard what you mean. Yep. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> but thank you guys very, very much. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, it was great. Thank you.